Hi friends, it's Katie and today I don't have an unboxing but I do have a brand new deck to show you and this is my first impressions. I um, wasn't sure what the deck was when the parcel came because it wasn't super clear so I kind of ripped it open and was very excited to discover that it is the Textured Tarot by Lisa McLaughlin. Now I have her two or oh, three Oracle decks and I love them so I was so excited when I found out that she was producing a tarot deck as well so I pre-ordered it. And it is here um, so I thought we could just have a bit of a look at it together so the box has this really lovely kind of smooth texture um, which is awesome and it is really quite chunky because um, what I understand there is the um, little guidebook in here as well which is cool I love that it's you know quite compact um, as lovely as the big boxes are to look at um, I don't love having to store them but I am really excited about this I did pre-order it Lisa McLaughlin and it is a collage style deck. I will say that even though this is just a tuck, tuck box it's really quite sturdy um, and of course I love that it has the little notch for your thumb so for a tuck, bo tuck box it's pretty nice. So we have the little white book which you know is pretty chunky actually because we have a rough number of pages on here. No, we don't really have page numbers, but, you know, it looks like we get a page per card, which is pretty good. And we get also a little reproduction of the card, which is nice. Oh, and we have some um, associations here too. Cool. So, little little book, which I think will be handy without being, you know, too much. And let's have a little bit of a look at the cards. This is the backing. Is it reversible? Yeah, it looks like it is, or very close anyway. Um, I don't read reversal, so it's not a big deal. I think it is. Um, but it's really interesting. And the deck is quite thick. Um, it feels like very similar cardstock, if not the same, to the, um, her Oracle decks, which I love. But being a tarot deck, it does mean that it's quite thick. Um, but I do love that cardstock, so I'm not, I'm not too mad about that. Just trying to arrange the camera for the best viewing experience and I think that's as good as we're going to get. Um, so I hope you can have a really good look at these cards because they're really quite detailed being um, collage. There's a lot going on and she showed on Instagram how she actually kind of layers digital stuff as well like textures on top of the collage art um, which is really interesting and collage art doesn't tend to be my favorite but I loved her oracle deck so much and just like the sort of colors that she uses and she manages to make it like she doesn't try to make it not look collagey but because of the textures that she uses over top and everything it comes together to still form a really cohesive image which I really really like I love how we have the the card is it the ace of diamonds um or the two of diamonds I'm not sure um card in their front pocket there it's really cute and we, it's very right away Smith. We have the um, tools on the table and the um, one arm pointing up in the air, the other down towards the ground. Um, and we have the red flowers as well and the white, which also appear in the right away Smith with the red and white flowers. I really like it. It's really fun. Love the top hat too. The high priestess. I love how not only is this card watery, but like she is watery. And we still have, like we have these veils, the black and the white veils, kind of reminiscent of the black and the white um, pillars. Um, we have like the crescent. And I love how she's kind of not, I don't know, super well defined. Um, I mean, I wouldn't like a deck, all of the deck to be like this because I find it a little bit hard to see. Um, but I think for the High Priestess it works really well. And actually, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be, but I've just seen this here. Looks like another face looking this way. Oh, and there is one this way too. Okay, so she has three faces. That's really cool. Maybe it's like, you know, how they say there's different mythological characters that have multiple faces and one sees into the past, one sees into the future. There's even Doctor Who characters like that. That's kind of interesting. I didn't notice that in the on online. Then we have the beautiful Empress, who's very pretty and very empressy. She's pregnant, got all the flower and flowers and everything around her. Um, yeah, very empressy. Pretty Rider Waite Smith um, sort of 
um, symbolism and everything, but it's just really pretty. Now the Emperor. I love that he has these books <laughs> um, as part of his throne. That's really cool. And how like up here, it's like a flow chart, like a, you know, someone planning something out or working out how things connect. That's really cool. See, so all these little details, I mean, I ha didn't have a good look at the images online because I just, I saw some, I s realized that I thought that they were pretty. I love her Orchidex, so I wanted to give it a go. So I didn't need to like look at every card. Plus I pre-ordered it, so they weren't, I don't think even all the cards were finished. But I really haven't seen much of this deck online. And I certainly haven't seen like good close-up big photos. I've just seen what she posts on Instagram, really. So I really love these little details that are kind of, in the background or just like imposed over the image. What are all these? They remind me of like, I don't know, you know how you see those zoomed in sciencey pictures of like a thousand percent, I don't know, zoomed in, magnified. Um, but yeah, I love this, how we have like the, like we're looking up at the building and the keys and the book very interesting I like this lover's card simple pretty very cute and the chariot the black and the white horse I love how the chariots were very square like in the Rider Waite Smith with the the cosmos kind of up the top but there does look like there's a lot of movement I love what they're wearing very cool. Just there's so many layers to this. Like it's not just flat collage. It's really, really layered and I like that. I really like this strength card just aesthetically. It's really pretty. Um, and even though, you know, the lion's um, mouth is wide open, she looks like she's being really quite tender. Um, and then we have this infinity symbol of roses. It just all looks really, really lovely. Um, and then, you know, the white dress and everything. Very classic Rider Waite Smith, just done with a new perspective slightly and very, very pretty colors. I like this hermit card too. Again, quite, we can recognize it as the hermit card. It looks very similar to what we're used to with the lantern kind of shining out and, you know, um, the character looks like she's in a woods um, like in a dark in the depths of a forest. We have an owl up here too. And she has very scraggly sort of a mix mesh of clothes. The Wheel of Fortune is, oh, we have like Yule in bulk, the Wheel of the Year laid out, which is cool. Um, we have the um, classic card suits as well. And I love how down here you can really see how this is like a mixed media deck. Like this is fabric and stitching and sewing. So yeah, I think this is a really clear example of how it's not just collage, it's mixed media. Justice looks very badass. I love this purple and this red greens. Just the colors she's used are very, very pretty. And we have like salamanders up there and then the heart and the feather scale. And is this an owl? Looks like owls in her throne. The hanged man, one of my favorites. He has a rose in his mouth too, or their mouth. It's very pretty, just love. It all comes together to form a very, very pretty deck. And I was a bit worried that um, I wouldn't be able to make out a lot of these images because they're quite soft and mixed in but so far I'm really enjoying it I love the simplicity of this death card um, with the white dying rose and I mean like this is a white rose bush so it's like it's been pulled off and now it's dying very pretty makes me have a lot of feels because I worked in a florist for a while <laughs> and there was so much waste made me really sad so I don't really like having um, like farmed flowers in my house anymore as much as I love flowers 
is a very cool temperance card. These, this like cloud of um, color, I nev I've never done it, but it reminds me of um, like the color run. I don't know if everybody has those, but we have a few of them. I've seen them in Brisbane and Melbourne, where you basically go on a run and they throw colored powder at you and you see photos of just like the powder everywhere and the clouds of color. That's what that reminded me of. It looks like a really cool like um stage costume with like feathery wings and um how their hair's all done really cool and makeup's very dramatic. Um we kind of have some alchemy symbolism and like the classic um temperance and her the the dress is half and half. And this cup is gold, this one's silver. So there's lots of kind of balancing happening there and mixing and combining. I love how we can see that in the dress, how it's like red and blue, but the center is purple. It's all very pretty. And then the devil, I love how this, this to me looks like a, like an old forgotten altar sitting up above the fireplace. It's quite, it's a little bit hard to see it's a bit easier to see in real life than I think is coming up on the camera. No, that's not helpful. <laughs> um, but we have these, I don't know what these are called, but they're like the wooden doll things that you can move all their joints and put them into different positions. And they have chains around them that I think are attached to the wall or are they just, yeah, I think so. And this, oh, actually, is that a mirror? At first I thought it was a photo or like a picture, a painting, but now I'm wondering if it's a mirror and we are, or we see ourselves as this creature. I don't know. You could see that either way really, but it's pretty cool. The tower. I love how pretty this manages to be while also of course being very much the tower full of destruction. Um, you know, with these flowers and growth and this beautiful um, kind of field and then this demolition and we have like these little faces that look very scared actually they're masks these are masks oh there's a lot of symbolism in there isn't there very interesting destroying the facade and the reality we perceive the the superficial very interesting the star again very very pretty I'm really enjoying these colors that um, Lisa has used oh the moon isn't that stunning I think this is a good example of how we can see that this is collage but the way that she's layered gives it depth it's not flat and it still also comes together to look like a single image I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not an arty person, so I don't know the correct language, but it's just really beautiful. And obviously we have a lot of the symbolism that we're used to. We have the crayfish and the wolf and the dog. Um, and then these kind of pillars, which um, not so much exactly like that in the Rider Waite-Smith, but we see that similar sort of imagery. And of course the moon and the sun. <laughs> this is fun. A little bit different imagery to what we see in the Rider right Waite-Smith, but I think this just exudes happiness, joy, fun, like childhood fun. Um, yeah, with the, like the merry-go-round and the jumping and the, the planes and yeah, looks like a lot of fun. Realization replaces judgment. Interesting. Now this is quite hard for me to make out, um, but what I think I see is that the, this is a person um, and this is the Milky Way it looks like to me and I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to be I feel like maybe is it a phoenix like these are the wings this is the tail at first I thought it was a weird jellyfish <laughs> um, and I feel like there's other things in amongst there but I'm just I am struggling to make this image out um, but I I struggle with things like this that are not very defined and I was worried more of the deck would end up being like this for me but so far this is really the only card um, and I will endeavor to have a bit of a better look later here we have the world which is just a really simple pretty wreath with plenty of like sacred geometry stuff in the background and then we have um, some astrological symbols just really pretty
This is really pretty. Reminds me of um, in the city. I'm sure they do it in other cities as well, but in Melbourne, there's a bunch of poles that have been crochet bombed. And so you see the poles like have all different colored um, crochet things up the side of them. That's what that reminded me of. But we also have like these autumn leaves falling and obviously all this kind of light and power. It's cool how it's coming from the hand and not from the wand itself. So it's kind of like what it makes me think of is the idea that the power is within you and tools can help you with it, but it's not in the tools themselves. And the two of wands. We still have the globe and obviously the two wands. This reminds me of the elder wand. Is that the elder wand? <laughs> Looks like the, and it's chained. Ooh, that's really interesting. And here's more examples of her, um, you know, like fabric and stitching being incorporated into the deck. I love how even the, um, the titles, like the actual title itself is, um, typed, but, um, it's kind of imposed over, um, some material. So it kind of, it doesn't look completely out of place either, which is kind of cool. You have the three of wands, which we've created this structure of some kind, this triangle. Um, and we have like this candle or fire on the inside. Very simple, but you can get a lot from this stuff. This is cute. Just a fireplace and then the celebration happening up in this image. Um, and then we have like the pumpkins and things as well in here, like the harvest and the success. So it's simple, but it's effective. Like you don't need a whole lot to kind of convey the essence of the card. Five of wands, that's interesting. I love how also the fire is in the back as well. Like we have a lot of fire going on in this. Six of wands, we have the laurel wreath. Um, and the six ones and like a ribbon up the top of bow. So yeah, we still get that whole like things coming together and success, um, which is cool. And the seven of wands, well, we have like screaming faces in the background, but it's one wand kind of standing up against the others, but it is on fire. The eight of wands, pretty classic, just very pretty colors. And I love this background the arrows flying through the air, nine of wands, oh wow, like a scarred warrior, and um, they're naked and very vulnerable in this position, but they haven't given up, kind of looks like they're taking a breath while the enemy, you know, has retreated for a while, or they're preparing for a second battle, oh, these scars are pretty intense, aren't they? Gives me a lot of feels, this one. Ten of Wands. I love that she's wearing Ugg boots. I'm wearing Ugg boots right now too. <laughs> we have these steps and, oh, and they go up on the next layer to the level behind her. So she, there's no really end in sight right now. She has a lot of work to do still. And then obviously the, the heavy burden on the back. I really like this. I love, I love that this character is giving us a wink. That's so playful and flirty. <laughs> it's just really fun. And I love all like the sparkle kind of falling around them. I don't know, it's just very, yeah, lighthearted, fun, like youthful. I like that. The King of Wands. Well, this is rather phallic, isn't it? <laughs> We've got some cons. Here's <laughs> the hair. <laughs> we have our queen of wands oh we even have the cat and oh are these the ones or is that just like a throne or perhaps both they're paint brushes oh paint brushes so like creativity and um you know projects being made and um self-expression and all of that good stuff very cool. I like that. King of Wands. So we have maintained the um, regular traditional names for the court cards. Oh, and this character has a lion tattooed on their chest. And is that hair? 
or is that like it almost looks like a lizard it is a lizard okay that is a lizard around the neck I wasn't sure if that was like hair coming down but I think it is a lizard and again we have like a paintbrush so I think you know this um, is really playing on the ones as you know cre creativity and spirit and well, we've got the um, Ouroboros and a lot of flame behind them as well. Very cool. The Ace of Cups. Just looks like, a, you know, just water going everywhere. You can almost hear, um, you know, like if you're at a very big water fountain. And Two of Cups. this is fun they kind of remind me just of like the shapes that they're in perhaps this one especially of those old little ballerina music boxes <laughs> but it's quite fun is that like a, a bee or something up there I don't know but all very pretty the four of cups haven't we always all felt like this before <laughs> I like this. The five. Well, that's interesting. I even have like a kiss here. There's a lot going on in this, whilst it's still quite simple. This is cool. I like this one. It's very interesting. I've never seen the Seven of Cups depicted this way. But we have like a house of cards. So perhaps it's like, I don't know, the first thing I think of is how, you know, fragile <laughs> house of cards are and how they just fall all apart. And so it's like the, the futility or the, like the impermanent nature of the superficial and the illusory. I don't know, and this all this texture again. The name textured tarot is really quite appropriate. The Eight of Cups, this looks very much like used to, like what we're used to seeing. I love how um, these kind of, I don't know what you call these, but like these stains, these paint marks, those, they like, look like they, they, they make up the hills. And then we have more of this stitching and then these like crystal glasses. And they're even arranged in the same way we see in the Rider Waite Smith. And on this character's back, we have this butterfly, which is rather symbolic, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, I love this. <laughs> nine of Cups. <laughs> and cats, you know how people often say that the Nine of Cups and the Rider Waite Smith has quite a smug look about him? I feel like a cat for the Nine of Cups, that works really well. Because as, you know, cup, uh, cats are all about luxury and, but they can also be really, really smug. <laughs> So I really like this beyond just the fact that it's teacups and cats. Um, I think this actually works on multiple layers. I like that. This is a card I've seen and I really liked this. Um, you know, rather than like a, a family, we just have two people um, and have their dogs over here. Um, this one's holding a rose and then we have, it's subtle, but we do have a rainbow behind the, the cups there. The page of cups oh this is cool kind of like dropping in to the subconscious into the self and meeting you for the first time or something like that that's really cool we have seahorses here too and these roses kind of like starting to float up around her very pretty the nine of cups the this kind of reminds me of like the white walkers with the blue eyes. <laughs> is this horse a white walker? For the queen of cups, isn't this pretty? Oh, that's cool. She has like a, a, a clam throne that is also a mobility aid. Uh, and you can't quite see if this is like a really pretty dress or if she's like a mermaid or... I love how it's all quite... It's just very, very flowy, which is appropriate for the cups. Very pretty. This king of cups. This is really cool. 
we have a swan over here candle and it's kind of like you know with the page of cups to here it's like he's already been to the depths and now he can kind of sit comfortably up the top and you know peer down when he needs to but he can still get shit done he's probably built this for himself too i don't know interesting ace of swords very classic love how this is like quite white Reminds me of like ice and snow. Two of swords. Oh, I really like this. I like that. How we have like a closed parcel and um, this person is perhaps making a decision. But the whole point is that, um, you know, you don't know what's in there until you've opened it. You don't know what's going to happen until you've made a decision. Like you can't know however much you think about it. Like that whole Schrodinger, Schrodinger's cat thing. It's both until you find out which one it is. So both possibilities exist until you've made the decision about what you're going to do. And then once you have, only one thing exists. I don't know, that's just what I'm kind of thinking about this. And we have like these cogs as well. <laughs> I was kind of thinking that it's like her her brain ticking over, trying to make up a decision. But also maybe like, you know, like, um, I don't know, there's kind of that metaphor of uh, the cogs of the universe. Um, and, you know, if one moves and it moves the other and, you know, you've only moved something slightly, but you ended up affecting something a long way away from you and how everything's interconnected that way. Hmm, I don't know. I'm getting a lot of thoughts about this card. I really like it. The Three of Swords. Well, that's really kind of visceral, isn't it? A lot of feeling in that person's face, which, you know, I'm assuming most of us would have if we had swords going through our heart. But yeah, that's pretty intense. I like this. Oh, I really like this. We have the character here kind of resting and sleeping, but it's like there's like a force field around them, like a bubble. And so the kind of the chaos and the destruction or the just the noise of what's happening in the outside world just doesn't penetrate. It's like true retreat. I like that. Now this is really interesting. I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. It almost like could be the fool. <laughs> um, but I mean, this fox has wings tied to it. And I suppose I'm just not sure which perspective to take on this, or perhaps that's the point um, of whether the fox is trying to be a bird and like trying to convince itself that it can be something it's not because it wants to be, it wants to fly, or whether it's like using these to trick the birds. I don't know. I feel like because it's jumping off, it would be the first, but I'm not entirely sure how that connects to the five of swords. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about this one for a bit. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments, though. I'm sure it's one of those things that once I am in a reading, it'll just click for me. But right now, I feel like I'm missing the obvious, <laughs> which is interesting, which is fun. That's a fun part about getting a new deck is those cards that you kind of go, nothing's really coming through for me right now. So we'll see how I develop with that card. The Six of Swords. I like this. We often have the boat moving across the water. Here we have the balloon, um, which in the liminal tarot, it's kind of a balloon, but a little bit more fantasy-esque. Um, it's like, it's not just a balloon, it's like a boat balloon. <laughs> um, but I really, I think this is just really simple, but conveys a similar message in a really beautiful way. The seven of swords. Oh, we have a wolf, kind of like the lone wolf, which is interesting. And it's still the same sort of principle, where he's, you know, running off with the swords in the night. It's just that it's a wolf, so it adds a different sort of perspective on the card. We have the Eight of Swords, which is very similar to the traditional, but still a little bit different in that normally we see a character who is loosely bound and their legs are free. Whereas in this card, it's basically the opposite. You know, they're still blindfolded. They still kind of look like they're in the middle of nowhere, left alone. But rather than being loosely bound and legs free... She very tightly bound and it's around the legs and it's barbed wire which cannot be pleasant it's funny how like just those slight differences 
um, like just with the way that she's bound kind of really change how you view the card in a lot of ways oh I like this a lot kind of like the cosmos on the blanket or the dress I think it's a blanket and this the way the shadow is done <laughs> it reminds me of um does anyone watch the land before time and I don't remember which movie it was, but it was one where, you know, kind of Littlefoot and his friends, um, like, adopt a, a, a meat eater or whatever they call it, um, like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, sort of a dinosaur. And it's a baby, and to help them escape from danger, this little meat eater dinosaur kind of stands so that his shadow is projected up against the wall, and it looks huge and so you know the kind of the bullies run off scared um that's what this reminds me of like this could be you know your tiny little plant in the room on the other side of the room or it could be creepy finger people coming to get you it really portrays that that whole um that feeling of you know the darkness and never really being quite sure if you can trust your eyes um, but that kind of being extended to our thoughts and our experience as well I really like that. I think it's very, it's done very well and it's very evocative. And it reminds me of Land Before Time, so it can't be too bad. <laughs> and the Ten of Swords. It's interesting, like this really dark cloud. It seems to be like almost, I don't know, what I first thought was you know, in a lot of um, fantasy, cartoons, whatever, when somebody dies or is killed, you kind of see like something released from their body whether it's good or bad sometimes it's white light other times it's like this black smoke um but maybe it's it's like the toxic um stuff in this person that's released i don't know that's really interesting to me and the page of swords we have a stack of books here and birds and she's um looking up to the sky with the other birds. I always like seeing birds um, up in the sky in the Page of Swords. Very cool. The Knight of Swords. A lot of movement here. Isn't the horse just really pretty? Again, we have some birds as well. And the Queen of Swords. Oh, this almost reminded me of Helen Mirren just for a second. I don't think it is, but <laughs> I'm kind of looking a little, you know, further away at the moment. So I can't make out all the details, but that was my first thought. I love how we have like flamingo and pink butterflies and whatever this is. Is that just a cool flower of some kind? She looks really cool. I like it. And she's like, has like a fence around her as well. She's like in the clouds, but with this fence, like protected or is protecting and we have these cogs again, which is interesting. Makes me think of, yeah, like the mind clicking over and thinking things through. I like that. Very cool. And the King of Swords. Love how we have like renewable energy. He's forward thinking. Very cool. And we have another, um, like a prosthetic mobility aid here. Um, yeah, more butterflies. I really like this. And he has a hawk and an owl. And then this is like really, um, reminds me of peacock feathers, his um, suit. Or eyes. No, but my first thought was peacock feathers. And it's like a grid too, which I like. I think it works well for the kings. Very cool. I like that. This is pretty. Just the green. Very simple. Very pretty. And it's like this texture is the same as the... the diamonds on the back of the card and we have feather here it's interesting like I feel like it's the sort of deck where you know every time you pull a card for a reading you know like there's kind of like the the initial image that you see which is the hand and the pentacle and then the more you look at it and depending on your reading and your intuition will pick up on different things I mean like this card's pretty simple there's not a whole lot in it but you know maybe you will notice the feather maybe you won't um, maybe you will notice those cogs in the um you know, the Queen of Swords, maybe you won't. Um, yeah, I think that that has a lot of room for intuition to kind of come through, which is cool. The Two of Pentacles, we have like butterfly wings and also 
um, is that wings or, oh no, it's like a little, um, plant in her hair too. I love how like the, the really subtle sparkly sort of infinity symbol there. Really pretty. And also the um, pips, the miners seem to be like slightly colour coded. Like not exactly, but they definitely have like a theme. And the pentacles are green. Three of pentacles. Very simple. And we have more of this, um, the diamonds in the background. And then they like old woollet, wooden tools like mallets or whatever they are and like um like building materials which is cool four of pentacles oh it's like a bull but a money bank like a piggy bank but a bull that's appropriate oh this is interesting so we have five like holes in this person like you can see straight through them and there's you know the five pentacles that would fit perfectly in there oh that is very interesting normally it's just like um you know it varies much about the material but this kind of makes you realize how important the material can be to our well-being and our sense of self and identity you know having enough in order to keep ourselves well having enough in order to do the things that are important to us. I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. Or maybe it's, you know, just feeling like a lack because you don't have what you want. Like you could kind of go either way with that. I don't know, there's a lot to go, to think over with that. It's very subtle imagery, but very effective. I like that. We have the Six of Pentacles. And we kind of have this reflected image but one is black and white one is colored and so there's this this character the two characters um sitting on this scale and it looks like you know she doesn't have any pentacles and she does so it's kind of like going one way and leaving one and you don't know which way it's going my first thought was that it was leaving her and that's why she um you know has been drained Or maybe she's returning and giving. I don't know. That's interesting. But definitely the word drained comes to mind. Um, you know, with that whole giving too much or not giving enough. Or That's interesting. But they are still balanced. They're still equal. Which is cool. Because, um, I mean, it depends how you go with this in terms of, like, you know, the black and the, the coloured and then the, what's going on. Um, but I've spoken about before how... One of the things I really dislike about a lot of Six of Pentacles and including the Rider Waite Smith is that there's such evidence power dynamic and the person who is like literally but also socioeconomically above the other person is the one with all the power in that situation and is, you know, giving. Um, like it doesn't feel like a, a generosity kindness thing, especially with the scales in the Rider Waite Smith to me. Um, whereas this, this is a lot going on. It's very interesting to me. This seven of pentacles is cool. I like this actually. I feel like you could go quite a few ways with this, but what I, my first thought was, um, was kind of, you know, cause we have the palette and the paint brushes here. I, my first thought is that this is a painter, um, reflecting on their work, um, and wanting to develop and grow and improve their skill going forward or perhaps you know redo some of the paintings that they've already done yeah kind of a simple but a different take on that classic kind of harvest um imagery in the traditional right away i like that eight of pentacles that's interesting the first thing that came to mind was manifesting um like making something happen that's a lot of beading and pearls in the background. Oh, actually, it's kind of like she's stringing together these things, and that's what you would do to pearls to create this. Oh, so I guess, like, it starts with manifesting, but then it's, you know, putting things together to create something and, like, just how tedious that work can be 
but also rewarding in the long run. That's kind of where I'm going with that imagery. I really like it though. Nine of Pentacles. <laughs> oh, I love how this is like they are in a jewelry box, but it looks like a treasure box with how everything's just like spilling out over top. And what's, oh yeah. From the distance, I thought that this was a bird with an apple for a head, but it's not. It's one of those covers that they use on hawks. <laughs> but this is definitely very reminiscent of the classic wealthy, independent woman. <laughs> she has everything she needs around her. Definitely a woman of luxury. <laughs> Just kind of makes me chuckle a little bit, I think, because it's so exaggerated with, you know, this character sitting in this giant treasure, tre tre treasure chest or jewelry box. The Ten of Pentacles. This is kind of cool. Um, like we have this really large mansion basically with a tree and its roots um, on top of the mansion. And to me, this makes me think of legacy um, and kind of, you know, having that stability and foundation that you've established and how, you know, the fruits of that, all that nourishes the fruits of future generations or, um, you know, whomever you're kind of, or whatever you're investing in. Yeah, that's kind of what that makes me think of. The Page of Pentacles. This is just a really pretty card. I love the green door, the red flowers, and then just everything about this is, I just really like the look of. And this character looks like they're working in a book at Shadows or something like that. And they have like, are they like, um, what do you call them? not almonds, acorns. Sorry, we don't have them in Australia, so I kind of just, but golden acorns. That's kind of interesting. Very cool, I like that. It's just very pretty and green. The Knight of Pentacles, working in a field, tilling and plowing. That works really well, I think. The Queen of Pentacles. Oh, I like this. They're out in nature. Um, doing some pottery. We have like a little hedgehog here, little bunny rabbit fox. So they're surrounded by animals in the forest. It's really pretty, I like that. And it has like this beautiful crown. You know, making and creating with her hands, but totally grounded in, in her surroundings. And you know, we kind of get like the mother nature vibe with like all these little animals and obviously her in nature. I don't know, it's just really beautiful. I like this a lot. And then the King of Pentacles. He looks very... Um, I love how, you know, it's so overgrown, um, just like in the Rider Waite Smith. Like, we even have it kind of, like, curling up around his legs. And even what he's wearing, it looks like he's almost just, like, ripped up some lawn and dried it out a bit and put that over him. <laughs> no, I really like it. It's very cool. Very, very earthy. I think she, um, Lisa's definitely captured like the, the elemental um, essence, especially in the court cards, but throughout the minor arcana, really like it. So this is the lovely textured tarot and I am so happy. It's beautiful and I'm really happy to see that there was a couple of cards that I struggled to make out the imagery. That was mostly the judgment, the realization, um, but for the most part, you know, I can really make this imagery out, which was my concern primarily, which I, I don't know that other people have the same concern, but um, I just, my eyesight's a bit funny like that. But the colors are beautiful. I really like just like the touch of this cardstock. I think it might be a little bit difficult to shuffle, especially riffle shuffle. I think this will be more of an overhand shuffler um, of a deck, but the colors are gorgeous. I just really like how much there is in these images to work from you know as I said there's kind of like the, the the central character or the central imagery that's kind of forefront but then a lot of the cards have other things going on in the background that you you know maybe only notice after looking at it for a little while um, and maybe you will only notice sometimes not all the time when you're doing readings um, like there's just really a lot of layers and obviously textures as well given that this is mixed media um, I just think it's really, really well done and very interesting. I feel like it's very Rider-Waite-Smith on the surface. Like most of the cards definitely 
harken back to a Rider Waite Smith meaning, but a lot of them even just look like the Rider Waite Smith in terms of, you know, positioning and overall, you know, look of the card, just done with a new art style, which will mean jumping into this deck, I think, will be quite easy. Um, but because it has those layers and those different textures and elements in the background and whatnot, I think they'll add very interesting texture to a reading as well as just the image, which I like. I like that a lot. I'm really enjoying the colours um, of this deck. Uh, that's certainly something that I noticed myself being drawn to is these beautiful colours. There was um, a reasonable amount of diversity in this deck too. Um, I mean, I only saw one or two people of different sizes, um, but there were a couple of examples as well of um, different abilities represented. Um, and there, I think there was a reasonable amount of um, racial and ethnic diversity as well. Um, so yeah, that was nice to see that there was more than one type of person represented as well. I just really enjoyed this overall and I'm really looking forward to getting to know it. It feels like a deck that I can just jump into. I mean, there was, what, two or three cards that I was kind of wanted to have a bit more of a think on, one of which was the Five of Swords. But I feel like that's more I want to see it in action um, rather than I need to study it, if that makes sense. I feel like sometimes when you get a new deck, some you just need to experience and then it'll start talking to you. Others you kind of need to sit down and read the book and analyze the image and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm feeling like this is a deck that I'll jump straight into using and I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm really looking forward to, to um, seeing how it reads and works with um, her Oracle decks because those have become some of my favorite Oracle decks, especially the life design cards. I just adore that deck. So this first impression for me is a big thumbs up. I'm really, really excited and happy to finally have it in my hot little hands. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first impression and a bit of a run through with me. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. If you have this deck, how have you found reading with it? Um, and I will talk to you all again very soon. So much love. Bye.